Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Amber and I'm the owner and creator behind Being Bliss. And in today's video, this is gonna look like a little bit of a different background to you guys. I have actually uh, switched my printing area into, this is my casita that's attached to my house. So now my printing room is gonna be its own little area. So I have my DTF printer back here. I'll give you guys a tour of the little room. It's just a little tiny uh, room that has a bathroom and kind of a little kitchenette area that I'm using for my shipping station. Um, and then I have some other things that are coming to this room at the end of the year. So super exciting. Um, I'm just over my head about what's coming. Um, can't wait to show you guys. Super, super, super exciting. So anyway, Today I'm going to do a video on just kind of my day-to-day -day maintenance on my DTF printer and I have a lot of printing to do so I'm going to take you guys through um, how I do it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this content and if you do please give it a thumbs up and follow if you're not already following this uh, page or subscribe however you want to call it. Um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's go! Okay, so first things first, sorry about the background noise. Um, I need to get my air conditioning looked at in here. I haven't really used this room for quite some time. Uh, we had it repainted and the whole thing. So um, anyway, I don't know if the air is really loud to you guys or not, but I can definitely hear it on my end. So I just wanted to apologize in advance for that. But this is the first thing I do when I come into uh, start printing for the day. I obviously I have this um, little thing right here that detects the temperature and the humidity levels in here and it ranges from like 35 to 40 percent humidity. Um, with DTF you kind of have to control that so your prints turn out good. But the first thing that I do is I come in here and I shake all of these. Don't mind the mess. Sometimes it's spills, overflows, and you just have to clean it. I try to be as careful as I can. But today, of course, because I wanted to film, I noticed that this was leaking and I do not know why or what happened here. So I'm going to reach out to my technical support team and see what the issue is. I do have to print today, so I'm just going to put like a little cup in there just in case it leaks again. The paint is dry because I tried cleaning it. It's all dry. So I don't know if it's from switching um, over to this room, like carrying it, maybe it's splashed over. I don't know. So I'm just going to go with that and print for the day because I need to get all these prints out. So anyway, first thing I do is shake all my inks. Uh, you don't have to shake on this printer, the colored inks every day, but I do just because white ink, you definitely need to shake every day. Um, and you can tell it's not super low, but it's a little low. So I like to have it all the way full every day when I'm printing just because my OCD kicks in and I'm like, I got to do it. So anyway, I have the white ink right here. So I'm going to, I've already shaken it. So once you shake it, you want to let it sit for like five minutes just to wait for like all the bubbles to get out. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully I can do this without spilling it and recording it at the same time. Just like to get it to like focus just to like the top right there where the lid is and I checked all the other colors they seem to be okay so let me just show you like how if I can get this off they I like them really tight so they don't splash but yeah so like this one's pretty full you go through a lot of white ink obviously um, but you can tell like all of them are pretty like up to the top you can't really tell with the black but the blue you can see and the red you can see. So I don't need to fill those. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but I always do that before I turn it on. I shake them up before I turn my machine on. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And you can see it's working through that. And I can feel it. I always put my finger right here to fill. You can feel it vibrating. So now you can see that the white ink is run through these, like, lines. Um, I don't know what they call them. I guess ink lines. And if you see that it's solid white right here, you're doing good. So this already like penetrated in here and ran through the lines. So we're good to go. Um, 
I just always make sure that this is running correctly. It doesn't look like it's leaking, so it might just have been from me moving the machinery around. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, I am probably going to put something under there to catch it just in case. Um, so the next thing that I do here after that is I like to pull from, this is the waste back here. I like to pull from that before I even turn the machine on. So this is a power button, but also to turn it on, the front power button is over there. So before I do that, I like to pull from this right here, and I'm going to show you how I do that in just one second. Well, maybe before we get started on this, I'm going to do a little tour. It's not a big one, so just let's do this really quick. This is where I store all of my inks, extra DTF supplies, all my cleaning stuff, solution. This is the oven that I use. I got these same cabinets and countertops um, as I do in my original shop, DTF printer, humidifier, computer over here. I got this chair and chair mat for in here, my little setup. I brought a shipping label printer in here just so I don't have to go back and forth. Just a little sitting area for now because sometimes I like to relax while I'm working. I got this portable table off of Amazon. I'm loving it. When I don't need it, I can fold it down and put it away. But for now, I'm just going to keep it up. Over here on this wall is going to be where I put something new that's coming. Um, and I will show you guys when I get that. I'm not going to get it probably until November or December because it's on back order. But I'm super, super, super stoked about it. It's going to be amazing. So that's where that's going on the wall. And then over here, I'm eventually going to get a bigger DTF printer because this little desktop guy, desktop guy isn't cutting it for me. <laughs> so we're gonna have to upgrade soon. My little dog, she's laying with me. I have a little doggy bed in there for her so she has somewhere to hang out. Eventually I will get a refrigerator to go there. I have my orders up there, this little station for my bags for the DTF. I'm using this little kitchenette area for my packaging, so to say. Um, don't really need the microwave, but it's just there. And then, yeah, just a little outside view. I finally have windows, my little bathroom in here. So just your regular bathroom, my little water bowl for Missy Lou. So yeah, hi. So this is my room. I'm really liking it. It's super cozy in here. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Okay. So I'm just checking on that to make sure it's not leaking and it looks like it's doing fine. So this is the next step that I do. I like to take this out of here and I have just an extra like wipe so that ink doesn't get anywhere. I wipe it off and I like to pull from the waste line so that all of the air bubbles come out of here. And that's what's going to give you like a really crisp print. Um, is what I've learned or taught myself uh, how to do this. So if any of you guys are professional DTF printers, makers, I don't know what to call it, please give me advice if you have advice if I'm doing this wrong. Uh, this is just what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and it's been working, so I'm just gonna continue it. So I'm just gonna pull from this line really slowly and you'll see that E comes out, but then it'll disappear again. That's just because there's a lot of air in there from it not being used overnight. So I just slowly like bring it through. You can see all the air bubbles coming out, which is a good thing. You want to do that. And it went away and it's coming back. So now what you want to wait for is for a consistency liquid flow. And that's when I know I'm good and I can stop pulling. So now there's a good consistent ink flowage, so I'm good to go. And I'm just gonna gently like pull this off so I don't get ink anywhere. Dump it in my waste bin over here without spilling. <laughs> and I always make sure to check how full that is. Um, it's about a little less than halfway, so after today when I clean, uh, before I put it away, I'm gonna empty that. That back in here. I got a little bit of ink on my hand, so if that happens, I'm 
I just get a rag and I use my cleaning solution. I just put a little bit on here. And it literally just like, it's like nail polish remover basically. It like comes right off. So I never have to worry about having like ink on me or anything like that. Okay, so once that's done, then I like to turn on the printer. So now I'm gonna turn it on and it kind of does its thing. So we're gonna wait a minute to see that's all up and running and then we will do the next step. Okay, so now that we've done pretty much all the maintenance we need to do, except for like a head clean, I'm gonna open this up. It's already turned on. I'm gonna leave this open so I can just kinda pay attention to whatever this guy is doing. It's dry, so there's nothing there. Um, not really used to having like a comfy chair, so I like to stand. <laughs> And we're going to go into our program. And it's going to take a minute, but as soon as I get into my program, I like to do a head clean. I usually do two, depending on how long like I've, it's been since I used it. Sometimes because I don't really work on the weekends anymore. I like to spend it with the family. So when I come in on Monday, I'll probably do like at least two to three head cleanings before I start printing. Um, just to be sure, and I have this film that I keep underneath here that I get. It's actually nozzle check film, so I'll do a nozzle check. I don't do those every day just because I know kind of how my printer is and how it works, and if something's wrong, I kind of know before it happens because when you use something every day, you just know when something's wrong. Just like the embroidery machines, if it's going to break the thread, I kind of know the sound of it, if it's going to do that. So anyway, long story short, let's open this up, get out of here, and I just go to devices, printer properties, and then head clean. So it's going to do a head clean, it only takes two minutes, it's like very fast. So we're going to do like two head cleanings, and then I'll do a nozzle check just to see like where it is on that. Okay, now we're going to do a nozzle check. So I'm going to get a piece of my film out, if I can get it. I'm going to tuck that back away. It just looks like this, and I actually reuse it. So I'm going to close this for a minute. And you want to definitely like move your um, sides to... I don't know what you call it. <laughs> Make it the size of the paper, the width. Don't know what that's called. So I'm gonna do a nozzle check pattern on here just to see if those two head cleanings are good enough or if I need to do another one. So you always wanna check that. And it looks like you can see, I don't know if you can see on here, absolutely not. Um, and it's really hard to see like I guess I have to like, but let me check this. So the black looks good. The white has one, two, three little missing pieces, which is probably okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and do one more head cleaning just because I want it to be perfect. Um, and then in the meantime, I'm going to wipe this off and let it dry because I can reuse it. Okay. I'm not sure how the angle is in this new room. I'm going to have to get used to it, but I'm going to do my best. So we're going to use this film. I'm loving this film. Uh, first, let me design this. So we're going to print. There's two of these right here that we need to do. So let's do this one first. I always like to crop it though because some of them have extra white around it. So I like to pull it all the way as close as I can to the edges on every single design. I know that this isn't necessary, but for me, 
to get the most out of the design that you guys choose, I take the time and crop it so that you don't have all this extra border around it and it's exactly like how big you want it. So if you say eight inches, you're literally gonna get eight inches of your design. So just a, a, just a heads up on how I do it. And then I go through here and I have to delete all of these in this program. I wish that they would change that, but you know, if they don't. So I gotta go in and delete all of them. So that was it for that one, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the size of this in here to eight. They want it eight inches wide, which makes it eight by about eight and three fourths. So um, I'm going to move this up here. I like to move it all the way to the top so that I can fit another design on here because I only do sheets, I like to fit as much on a sheet as I can. Soon I will have a roll feeder so I can do game sheets and all the things that you guys want and need. So that'll be coming soon. But let's go and find this one because they want the mama. Alexa, off. Okay, so we're gonna make this. 10 inches for now, but for instance, look at how much white is around that photo that I downloaded. So now I gotta go in and crop it. So I gotta go in and manually just move these lines as close up as I can without hitting any border. And I do it on all four sides. As close as I can. Now I go in and just delete all of these little things in here. It will not let you, it will not let you size your image to what you want it to until all of these things are gone, which is a pain, but that's just how it is. Okay, so now in this program, I'm gonna nest my images so that when I nest them, they just go on one page. Right now, because I entered them in separately, they're on two different pages. So I'm gonna do it so that they're both on the same page. So what it's doing is putting it like this. I don't want that. I want to move this, and I'm actually gonna make it non-rotated. So I'm gonna move it back over here. And then this, I wanna make sure is eight inches. And then this one, she wants to have it at 12 inches. So now I'm gonna make it 12 inches. I'm gonna move this over and down a little bit because this is all I can fit on this one page. So I'm just gonna like, Move it around a little bit. And it usually doesn't take this long. I'm just trying to explain it all to you guys and do it too. So anyway, let's get that going. So these are the sizes of my paper. They're 13 by 19. But when I say that, that's how big the paper is. Unfortunately, my printer does not print all the way to 13 and all the way to 19 inches. Um, so I've actually cheated that and I bought a roll of film instead of sheets of film. So I still have a ton of sheets that I'm trying to use up, but I've been cutting my roll to size. So it's still 13 inches wide, which technically my printer, before head striking, it only really prints up to 12 and. 12.25 is like the largest I can go without any mistakes happening. I really can't explain that. It's just kind of the printer I have. Um, but if I have the roll feeder, I can actually go, take that back. I don't have a roll feeder, but I bought a roll of film so I can cut it bigger than this so that I can actually go up to 19 inches. So if you've been on my website and you see that I can only print up to 17 and a half inches, 
I'm going to be changing that because I figured out a way around it. Until I get a bigger printer, I'll be able to print at least up to 19 inches. So there's that. Let's go ahead and get this in here. I have to stand on my tippy toes. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. And then we're just going to go in here. I want to make sure I have it on the right stuff because, again, I just did an upgrade, so I need to make sure everything is good in here. I need to do a color adjust, make sure all of these are good. This needs to be on 95, that's just what I like it at. And then 80% white under black, that makes the colors pop more and having that white layer on the back lets your powder adhesive stick really well and it just makes a good prolonged life of the DTF. So there's that. And we're ready. So now we're going to go and print. Gonna select that and hit print. So now it's going to print. Okay, it's just about done printing and I'm going to be putting through another print that I just created if you can see up here so now I while one is printing I always create another one and this one is super cute I'm gonna show you they're backwards because they print like that but this is the spooky vibes one and then this one is my doozy one so super cute um, and I wanted to show you guys, because it's not all perfect over here in the shop all the time, it's a work in progress, uh, just like everyone else. So I just wanted to show you what I mean by when I say it head strikes sometimes, and that I can't go all the way over. So this is what it does. So this image is about 12 inches. So if I would have made it any bigger than that, it would have had a head strike right there. Um, I have gone back and forth with the company that I bought this printer from. It does not do it on this side. It only does it on that side. I have tried to rig up <laughs> the other side. Um, basically, long story short, my tray where my paper feeds through is bent a little bit on that side, which means I have to take apart the entire printer and try to fix it. I've tried um, whatever I can to make it fix, and I've gotten it better because it used to head strike a lot more than that. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to empty out all of my ink and send it back to get a new one because this printer is pretty perfect except for that. So I'm not going to go through all that just to maybe get another printer that does the same thing or is even worse. So that's what I mean when I say that. So. Just a little inside info. And here is where I powder my prints. So this is in my bathroom. And I like to hide it all in here. So this is in the back so the powder doesn't get anywhere. Um, I'm still using it out of the bin. I did buy this legit powdering station, but I need to find a table I can put it on because it still just sits really low. I'm really, really liking it, but until I find that good table good enough for it. I'm just going to continue using the bucket. So let's get powdering. Okay, now that I've powdered it, I'm going to put it in my oven right here. I have it set at 275 for about 135 seconds. I'm going to turn on my purifier so it's going to get a little loud. But honestly, when it comes to curing your prints, it's all about trial and error. Um, every oven is going to be different. Every room setting is going to be different. Um, everywhere you live, different states are different. So curing is all about trial and error. Trust me, I've learned that. So you just have to keep trying until it until it works out.
let's go check on the other print. And honestly, it doesn't always head strike because if it was going to, it would have already done that. Um, it's usually only on the first, first one or two prints that I do of the day. So that's what I mean when I say I don't really want to like take this apart and send it back because that's a lot of work. And then I'll be down a printer. Um, I don't want to be down a printer because I have orders to get out. So I would rather just deal with it when I need to rather than sending it back and stuff. But see, this is a very clean print. There's no striking. It's just very clean. So it's usually, again, like I said, only the first one or two prints of the day and then it's gone. So I can't explain it. I have no idea why it does that. Um, but yeah, I love this printer and I'm happy with it. So that's all there is to it. So I was telling you guys earlier that I buy the rolls of DTF now. So in this box is a big roll of DTF film. And it's the Instapill, which I really, really enjoy because you don't have to wait for it. It just peels off like butter. And with the machine that I have, uh, you're only supposed to use sheets. And in the computer software, you can only set it to 13 by 19 sheets because it is not a roll printer. So I can cut these sheets up to, you know, 13 by, I would say like 20 inches at the most because my, again, my printer will only print up to 19 inches in the computer software program. I haven't been able to like go around that. Um, but if I use the sheets at 13 by 19 inches, the printer will, at the very end of the print, I wish I had a, actually I do, no I don't. So if this was a sheet and I printed it all the way to 19 inches or set this all the way down, it would just keep going over and over and over the print and it wouldn't look good. So um, I've figured out that it has to be an inch and a half longer than the 19 inches. So that's why if I use the sheets, I can only do images on that sheet up to 17 and a half inches, leaving that extra inch and a half room for it to feed through the printer. Hopefully that makes sense. But now with the roll of prints, um, I can cut it to size. So if I cut it to like 20 inches, I can actually go up to 19 inches on the printer with designs so I can fill in that space a lot more with cutting these to size. So it takes a little bit more time, but I get more out of it. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys agree. Um, if there's another way to do it, please let me know. I'm interested, I'm curious, and yeah, I'm just trying to Print the most out of what I have and also give you guys the most bang for your buck. So let me know. Oh, this is perfect. I've been waiting for this to get here. I ordered a new DTF roll of film and some new powder. So I'm going to try that because I want to start. I've been testing out all different kinds of films and powders and everything. I've heard this one's really good. So I'm going to try this one and see if I like it. It is the hot melt powder for DTF white. It's from DTF station. Um, I, Purchased it on a print supply. That's where I got my printer from. But I was told that this film and powder together is really good. So I'm going to try it. Um, and the reason why I keep my film in the box kind of secure is because you don't want to keep your film out in the open air. Because just like the ink, the film can go bad too. So that's the thing with um, not having a roll printer and printing on the roll every day. When I cut it to size, I have to put it away when I'm done. So I just like to keep everything nice and tidy. So yes, so that is why I do that. This is also the DTF transfer film from DTF Station. And I did purchase it from AA Print Supply. This is the 13 inch roll because I have the A3 Plus printer. 
So make sure if you're ordering, you get the right size for your right printer. So I'm going to test this. I like how it comes with these. My other one, my other roll came with this too. Because I just put them on the ends and then I just kind of like pull it out and cut it as I need to. So really nice that it does that for you. So anyway, let's get this put together. You want to be very careful because this the part on the outside is the, actually the print part, or the part that you print on. So you'll be able to see that like one side is shiny and one side is more matte. So you wanna be very careful because if I was putting this into my printer like that, it would be printing on that side. So just be very careful with your print. It's very, very sensitive. And don't think that I waste my sheets because I don't. Um, you guys all know I like to save products and whatnot. So if I'm using a 13 by 19 sheet, but I only have to print one image and I have like a bunch of the sheet left, I cut it. So all of these right here are different sizes. And if I only have to do like a logo or some small print, I'll use my cut off uh, pieces that don't, I don't want them to go to waste. So. I just stick them in here, close it tight, put it away until I need to use it. All right, I had to pause the video recording for a little bit. I'm working on a custom order and I wanted to show you guys in all transparency what I meant about <clears throat> not being able to fill up the full sheet of 13 by 19. So this is a 13 by 19 sheet and you can see again where it like scraped over there. And then here on the bottom, I don't know if you can really see it, but see how it like, in my program, it showed that I had enough space, but then when it printed, sometimes the roll feed feeds the sheet like too far forward, if that makes sense. So on my program in the computer, up here on the top, it showed that this was all the way up to the top so that I would have enough room down here. But when it decided to feed the film through the printer, it went a little too far. And I don't really know if it's gonna do that or not do that. It just is like, again, trial and error. So basically I got two good prints out of this. This one I'm gonna have to trash because that doesn't look good. So that just goes along with having a printer and kind of doing your job as a business owner. So you kind of have to bite the dust. I don't know if that's the right saying or not, but we're printing more. So it's about to print more. I reformulated it in here. So I kind of like rotated them so they look better. Um, and hopefully that doesn't happen again. Again, it's just trial and error. So I'm going to have to end this vlog or whatever you want to call it for the day because I have a lot of work to get done but I just wanted to show you guys my daily printing routine so I've actually printed a lot since I stopped filming earlier I got all of these printed I have I got those orders done this one's done I just need to um I'm waiting for them to finish in the heater or the oven other than that this is my new printing room. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to film more in this room. Have a good night. Bye guys.